Um, I want to introduce a really good friend of History Maker. His n name is Mike Piliacci. Can you give him a huge History Maker welcome? His name is Mike. He's been part of History Maker for many years. He's from the UK and he loves Tim Hortons coffee. That looks like a smile to me. Um, what I love... <laughs> love you, Mike. What I love about Mike is that he is like uh, all about the next generation, wanting to invest in young people. So we are here tonight to hear from Mike. You'll never win that one, Mike. I'm just trying to be like Mike. Can we lift up him in prayer because he's just a great friend? Can we do that? If you don't mind just raising your hand out. Because we're all family here. I hope that if, if this is your first time, you're going to get to know me. It's just family. We're one big youth ministry. He's asking you to raise your hand in front. There you go. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for Mike. Thank you for his team. Thank you that he's taken time to be with us, to invest in a generation in BC to know you. Lord, I pray that the 2,000 plus students in this room would encounter God in a new way, a fresh way, so that somehow, some way, they would reach their friends for Christ. And we lift up Mike and his team that want to do that in the UK and have been working so diligently to do that. We thank you for him. We pray that you bless him, that you continue to give him dreams and vision and the team around him to reach a generation within a generation. We pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. It's all yours, man. Thank, thank you man. for being here, Fred. Thank you. Well, um, we just had young and free. And um, I am, on the other hand, old and expensive. <laughs> and uh, you'll find that out as the week goes by. I'm actually going to move this because... Um, um, I've got um, 29 minutes and 38 seconds uh, left to speak to you and um, I, I just thought it's the first night, you don't want it to be long, I don't want it to be long, I, I want to go and eat <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, and, and I know amen back to you um, and uh, um, so I was thinking what could I talk about that won't take very long um, and uh, I thought if I talk about one Bible verse one Bible verse cannot take long, can it? And so I thought I might talk tonight on my favorite Bible verse. And uh, it's been my favorite Bible verse for a number of years. And it's from uh, the book of Zephaniah in the Old Testament. Now put your hands up, all of you who have read the book of Zephaniah. Sorry, guys, could, could I have the lights on up out there a little bit more? please. Just put your hands up, all those of you who have read the book of Zephaniah. Okay. Put your hand up if you have never read the book of Zephaniah. I want to talk to those of you who have never read the book of Zephaniah. And I want to say to you, read the book of Zephaniah because one day you will die and I haven't finished shut up and if you die knowing Jesus you will go to heaven and somewhere in heaven you will meet Zephaniah how will you feel when he says have you read my book? And you say, what book? <laughs> if for no other reason than that, read the book of Zephaniah. Now it's only got three flipping chapters. You can read it in 12 minutes. I timed myself once. And if I'm honest, the first two and a half chapters, they're, they're you know, I mean, it's the Bible, so it's good, but it's a bit hard work. But halfway through, what are you drinking? Come here. Come around here. You finished it? Yeah, there's a little bit left. 
I'm not, that's, half, that's half a mouthful. I'm not having half. <laughs> Sit down. Don't clap him. And halfway through chapter three, in verse 17, is my favourite Bible verse. I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to talk about it line by line. It goes like this: The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. That's all right, isn't it? That's a good And we're just going to look at it line by line. Are you videoing me? <laughs> You're taking pictures of me, unauthorized. Come here. This side. This side. Go there. There. Back. Get ready. If you're going to do it, you may as well do it properly. The first line. Be quiet, otherwise, we'll be here all night. The first line is the Lord your God is with you. Now you know what, we, um, we, we can say that so easily. Uh, in more traditional churches, uh, the person at the front at the beginning of a meeting, beginning of a service usually says the Lord is here and everyone else might say his spirit is with us. In more hip and trendy churches, sometimes if it's been a good worship time, people say afterwards, the Lord was here today. Which always makes me wonder, because it's like, was he not here last week? <laughs> anyway, but we can say, uh, you know, the Lord is with us without thinking what it means. You know, one of the names for Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is with us. God did not open a window in heaven and shout down, I love you from a distance. He came himself. He took our skin. He became one of us, that he would forever identify with us. He is closer to us than we could ever imagine. And he will never go away. He will never leave us or forsake us. That's the promise he makes. And you know what? Um, I, I had a, um, a, on my Facebook news feed a while ago, some, I, I noticed someone wrote, uh, over the next few days, I'm going to delete half my friends because uh, there's too many. Uh, and then they said, so if I delete you, I hope you won't be offended, which I thought was hilarious. And I kept looking to see if I'd been deleted. But you know what? When we can delete friends at the press of a Facebook button, you need to know God will never press the button. He will never delete you. He's made that promise. Why? Because the Lord your God who is with you is mighty to save. What does it mean he is mighty to save? Now, I brought four interns with me from England. Uh, Jack, why don't you just come up here quick? Just, just come quickly this, this year. You're, you're eating into my time. And No, don't woe, Jack. Stop it. No, no, no. Jack. Stand there, all right? Flex your, your muscles, all right? Now go. Now I just want you to have that picture in your mind's eye. And imagine I am walking down a dark alley late at night with Jack. And walking the other way, is a gang of gangsters. <laughs> and the leader of this gang of gangsters stands in front of me like this. And he says, what you staring at? You want, you want to start something? You want to make something of this? 
If he did that, I would look at him, I would look at all his friends, I would look at Jack, I would look down at me, and I would run for my life. Because <laughs> I've done the maths. We are going to get killed. But imagine. I'm walking down a dark alley late at night, not with Jack, the stick insect intern, <laughs> but with the rock. And walking the other way is a gang of gangsters. And the leader stands in front of me like this. And he says, what you staring at? You want to start something? You want to make something of this? I would pause. I would look at him. And I would say, yeah. Yeah, maybe I do want to start something. Maybe I do want to make something of this. And then I would say, rock, eat them for breakfast. God, in this example, is a lot more like the rock than he is like Jack. Because, because the God who is with us is mighty to save. He is a God with biceps. He is a God who makes a difference. He is not a celestial wimp. The God that we believe in, the God who is with us, is a God who is mighty to save. And do you know the amazing thing about this? Is in order to save us, he didn't make himself bigger to impress us. He made himself smaller in order to show his love for us. He made himself smaller. And you know what? God's power was made perfect in weakness. And it was the weakness of the cross when he allowed himself to be nailed to that tree and he was stripped naked and they beat him and they mocked him and they watched him suffocate, suffocate to death. In that weakness, he became strong and mighty to save. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. Line number three. He will take great delight in you. What does it mean, he will take great delight in you? You know, I became a Christian when I was 15 years old. And uh, they told me that God loved me. And you know what, I actually believed that God loved me, but I didn't think he liked me very much. And I thought his love was like this. Well, we love Mike, he's prayed the prayer of salvation. and. We got to let him into heaven, but oh dear, let's find a little corner for him somewhere where he won't cause too much fuss. And I kind of imagined that he didn't really like me very much. And, and over time, God had to speak to me again and again and again. And then there was this one time, I was, uh, I was speaking at some meetings in, somewhere in England, and I was with a, a friend of mine called Matt, and we were staying in this family's house and it was a husband and wife and three children and the youngest was a little baby called Ben. And Ben was about, I don't know, eight, nine months old. And uh, Matt and I were in the front room and uh, the, the, the parents were in the kitchen and they were getting the, the meal ready and they were putting it on the plates. And I was playing with Ben and I love little babies because they can't answer back. And, and I was holding him and I was going like this, Gucci, 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 Goo, Gucci, Goo, Gucci, Goo. And he was probably thinking, what an idiot, but he couldn't speak. So I was Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. And then suddenly, I sensed something in the diaper region. I felt it and then I smelt it. And I, well, I'm not good with that sort of stuff. So I was like, Gucci, Gucci, ugh. And then I suddenly start, I found myself going, Gucci, 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 Goo, Gucci, Goo, Gucci, Goo. And after a while, my arms started to ache. And I thought, I can't do this for much longer. And I thought, what am I going to do? And I thought, I can't throw him away. They've made laws against that these days. So then I suddenly had a brainwave and I said, hey, Matt, here's Ben. And Matt caught Ben and he started going, Gucci, Gucci, ugh. And then he started going, Goochie, 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 goo, goochie, goo, goochie, goo. Well, 
do you know, after a while, little Ben started to cry. I think it was a mixture of his diapers being full and running over, being stretched prematurely, and smelling the food. And he started to cry, and just at that moment, his mum came in with the dinner, and she took little Ben, and you know what? God spoke to me through what happened next. She took her little boy to feed him, and do you know what? She didn't hold him like this. She held him like this. And God said to me, you think the way I love you is like this. But I want you to know, with all your mess, with all your poo, with all your stuff, I love you like this. I love you close because I took your mess on myself so that you would be forever close to me. Uh, for years, for years, when I've... Um, for, for years, um, I, I spend half my year, almost half my year, traveling in other countries. Uh, but when I'm home for years, um, every Sunday, I would go to my mum's for Sunday lunch. Now, you would think that um, I would go to my mum's for Sunday lunch because I'm a good Greek son. And I know she, 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 used, she would live alone and, and, um, and, you know, she was in her 90s and... And, you know, I would go and, uh, and, and, you know, check that she was all right, that she hadn't fallen over or eaten the cat by accident or anything like that. If you thought that, you would be completely wrong. I used to go to my mum's for Sunday lunch every Sunday I was home because she cooks the best Greek food there is. And on a Sunday morning before I went to church, I'd pick up the phone, I'd dial her number, the number would ring. Five minutes later, she'd answer the phone. And I'd say, hello, mum. And she'd say, who's that? And I'd say, it's your son. And she would say, which son? And I would say, it's Michael, your son. And she would say, Michael, my son, it's you. You see, she always repeats everything I say. And then, and then I would say, today, I am coming to you for lunch. And then she will always say, Michael, my son, I am so happy that today you are coming to me for lunch, for I have cooked for you your favorite Greek food. I have cooked for you moussaka. I have cooked for you gleftigo. I have cooked for you dolmades. I have cooked for you magaroni do furno. It's okay, I had a moment and I'm back. And I would say, mum, I'm coming, because they were all my favorites. But first I had to go to church, and I'd go to church, and the worship band, they'd sing the same songs over and over again. And I think, why are we singing this again? We've sung it 16 times already. Shut up, somebody get me a gun, I'll shoot the drummer, you know, just. <laughs> This is going on and on and on. It's always the drummer, have you noticed that? And it's on and on and on. And eventually the worship would stop and, and we'd have the talk. And then at the end, I'd want to go. But everyone in my church stays behind for coffee and they'd all want to talk to me. And it would be like, hello, how's your week been? How are you? And then, and then I'd have to say, how are you? How's your week been? Even though I didn't want to know. And it would be like, and after a while, I'd be, th I'd be thinking, why don't you leave me alone? Go away, don't you people have homes to go to? I don't even like you. And you know the trouble with that is I'm the pastor of the church. And eventually they go, I get in the car and I drive to my mum's house and as I'm driving, I can smell the gleftigo, I can see the dolmades, I can taste the magaroni de furnu. My car would screech to a hall outside her house. I would walk down the path. I would knock on the front door. Ten minutes later, she would answer the door. She would open the door and she would say, Michael, my son. And I would say, hi, mum, where's lunch? And I'd sit there and she would bring it to me and I would be for a moment paralyzed by ecstasy. I don't mean the drug, I don't mean the drug, bad drug, don't ever, no. 
I would be paralyzed by it, and I wouldn't know what to eat first, and I'd try to eat it all at the same time, but it would cause a blockage in my here. And, and, and you, you can probably tell just by looking at me. I take great delight in food. Did you know that in the same way, the Lord your God who is with you, the one who is mighty to save, he takes great delight in you. Before we started the, tonight, you know, some of you were thinking, oh, why do they drag me here? I hope, I hope there's some nice people of the opposite sex here. Oh, no, I hope the speaker's not going to be boring and old and go on and on and on. And, and your worst fears are being realized right now. And some of you were thinking, oh, I'm not sure I want to. Well, while you were doing that, do you know one level up in heaven? I imagine there was a conversation between two angels. And the first angel was saying to the second angel, God's so looking forward to tonight. He's had it in his diary for ages. And the second angel saying, well, what's happening tonight? Don't you know tonight's the night? And the first, second angel was like, what do you mean tonight's the night? You don't mean the second coming, do you? And the first angel says, no, 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 that's not until, oh, I nearly told you. <laughs> that's a joke, I don't really know. But anyway, and, and, and the first angel says, no, tonight in, in is it called Chilliwack? Ch Chil in Chilliwack near Vancouver, in British Columbia. Some of his kids are gonna get together and they're gonna, they're gonna worship him and some of them are gonna be dancing and waving their hands and, and some of them are gonna be pretending to be dancing. <laughs> and some of them are just gonna be mouthing the words. But he can't wait to meet with them because he loves them and he can't wait to meet with them. The Lord your God who is with, is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. We're coming into land. Number four, really quickly. He will quiet you with his love. What does it mean he will quiet you with his love? A while ago, I was uh, shopping in a supermarket in England. And do you call them trolleys or carts here? Yeah. Carts, I thought so. And. Uh, and I was with my car and I was standing by the frozen food section. In fact, I was standing by the ice creams, which is where I do all my shopping. And then I noticed down the aisle, there was this, uh, this little boy, he was about five, and he was standing on his own by the frozen peas. And I thought, what's the little boy doing standing by the frozen peas when he could be standing by the ice creams? And then I, was no I noticed he was doing this, he was going... <laughs> And then I thought, there's something wrong here. Because you see, I have the spiritual gift of discernment. And just at that point, these two old ladies came up to him and they said to him, hello, little boy, are you lost? Have you lost your mummy? And at that point he went, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> And he let out this horrible scream that was just ear piercing. And after a while, a message came over the loudspeaker system. Would the mother of a little boy who answers to the name of Ah, please go to the frozen peas and collect him. Well, eventually the mother came and she got hold of her little boy and she said, come here, little boy, come here. You see, she didn't know his name either. Come here, little boy. And she picked him up and she held him and she said, I'm so sorry I lost you. I'll never lose you again. I'm here for you now. And as she was doing that, I was watching and his head was there on her shoulder. And as she was soothing him, he went like this. He went, they always hiccup at the end what was she doing she was quieting her little boy with her love she was quieting him with her love she was saying tonight the Lord your God who is with you the one who is mighty to save the one who takes great delight in you 
He wants to quiet you with his love. There are some of you here on the outside, you're smiling. On the outside, it's all right. But on the inside, you feel like that little boy. You feel broken and you've, you've, you're hurting and you're crying on the inside. Well, over this weekend, the Lord your God, he wants to quiet you with his love. And finally, he will rejoice over you with singing. Now, when I first heard that, I thought that can't be right because it's our job to rejoice over him with singing. Did you know before we ever sang to him, he sang over us. He is the singing God. And in fact, it's even more crazy than that. That phrase that is translated in our Bibles, he will rejoice over you with singing. In the original Hebrew, it's, it speaks of, he will spin like a top and let out whoops of joy. Can you believe that? That's our God. That's the God who is revealed in Jesus. That's the God who is here. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will, he will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. And I wanna to say to you, this God is knowable. You can know him. Guys, Christianity is not about religion. It's not about rules and regulations. It's about a relationship. It's about a relationship and Jesus, who died in weakness on the cross, rose from the dead and is here today. And he wants to have a friendship with you if you don't yet know him. And in just a few moments, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna sit down, not because it's um, more holy or spiritual, but because my little legs have a lot to carry and I'm tired. <laughs> oh, that's so much better. And uh, in, in a moment, I'm gonna ask some of you to do an incredibly brave thing and a gutsy thing. If you're not a follower of Jesus, or you don't know if you are, and you want to be, you want to meet him, you want to know him, I'm gonna ask you in a moment to get out of your seat from wherever you are and come and stand at the front here. And if you do that, I promise I'm not gonna embarrass you. I'm not gonna do anything weird to you. I'm not gonna kiss you. I'm not gonna lick you. I'm not gonna push you over. We're not gonna take your money, that comes later. That, that's a joke, well it's half a joke. And I'm not gonna do anything like that. We just wanna introduce you to Jesus. Now you know what, I could do it an easier way. I could say if you wanna become a Christian, then at the end of this meeting, I'm gonna be standing over there, I will be in green. Just sidle up to me and whisper from the corner of your mouth, I wanna become a Christian. And then I could say, okay, I'll slip you a quick prayer. A bit like drug dealing, you know, in the corner. But I want the moment you give your life to Jesus to be a moment you'll never forget. I want it to be a line in the sand. So I'm gonna ask you to do a gutsy thing. I'm gonna ask you to do a brave thing. If you can't come on your own, nudge your friend and say, will you come with me? They will. All we're gonna do is lead you in a simple prayer. Maybe you've been hanging out with the, in the youth, around the youth group, but you've never actually given your life to Jesus. Maybe you've grown up in church, but you've never actually made a commitment. And tonight's the night when you can. If you're not a follower of Jesus, or you don't know if you are, you've started. I haven't said come yet. That's very good. That's keen, all right, stay there. That's very good. Stay, he, you stay there. Well done, guys. Well done. Well done. You know, if you don't, then I'm going to ask you to come and join these guys and give your lives to Jesus and give your life to Jesus. It's the best decision you could ever make. And the last thing I'll say before we pray, the last thing I'll say, hello, mate. <laughs> the last thing I'll say before we pray, hey, guys, it, remember, Christianity is about Jesus Christ. If you, take, if you take Christ out of Christian, do you know what you've got left? Ian. Ian isn't gonna save you. Ian can't help you. Do not put your trust in Ian. Put your trust in Christ. Never take Christ out of Christian. So if you wanna give your life where you're coming, come on then, come on then, come on then. If you can't come on your own, ask a friend to come with you. Band, you might want to join me and others.
Well, this is amazing. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. If you're not a follower of Jesus or you don't know if you are and you would like to be, why don't you just come? And we're going to, you know what? This is the best thing that could happen all weekend. This is the best thing. This is the best thing. And um, is one of the leaders going to come and join me maybe? You, would you come? Just, um, this, is gr- this is great guys. We're going to wait if there's any others. We're going to wait if there's any others. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your money. (laughs) No, that's a joke, you got scared there, didn't you? (laughs) Oh, you're gonna give me your money? No, no, no. Um, We're gonna, guys, we're just gonna lead you. There's one or two others coming up. Why don't we, the rest of us, why don't we pray for them? Because in the next few moments, a miracle is going to happen. A miracle is going to happen. And uh, you guys at the front, I'm just going to lead you in a very simple prayer. All right? You might want to close your eyes if that helps you to concentrate. If you think we might steal something, keep your eyes open. It's just to help you concentrate. You don't have to have your eyes closed. Why don't we just pray for them right now? Stretch out your hands, guys. Just in your, in your heart in your heart why don't you say say this Lord Jesus I thank you that you love me more than I could ever understand with my mind I thank you that you showed your love by coming to earth and dying on a cross for me I thank you that you are mighty to save I thank you that you take great delight in me. You delight in me. I don't understand why, but you do. I give my life to you. I ask that you forgive me for my selfish living. I thank you that I can have complete access to you, that you will never delete me that you will never turn from me, that I will belong to you. And I say, Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to be my friend and my king and my savior. And I want to follow you all my days. And I thank you by faith that even as I've prayed this prayer, you've answered and a new relationship begins. Amen. Now, guys, hold on a second. Just before I hand over, hold on, hold on, hold on. Up until now, I just told you the good bits because I wanted you to pray that prayer. But now you've prayed that prayer, it's too late. You can't unpray it. So there's another bit that I didn't tell you. Just look out at all of these folk. Just look out. In the last few moments, all of us just became your brothers and sisters. Guys, why don't we welcome them into the family? Come on, church. Church of BC, Yukon. Brothers and sisters in Christ, come on. He's worthy to be praised. He delights in you. He loves you. He doesn't forsake you. He doesn't leave you. He wants to speak new life in you. For the ones that just gave their life to Jesus for the first time, we have a packet for you. All you gotta do is go to the HM booth. It's in your right, my left, up in this section here. There's a Bible there, and there's some information for you. Number one. Number two, we encourage you to talk to your leader or your pastor. So if you've made a decision to come to know Jesus for the first time or recommit or submit your life to Jesus, please talk to your leader. And the last thing is this. 
Why don't we lift up the name of Jesus in worship? There's this promise. There's this promise, young person. There's a promise in scripture, youth leader, youth pastor, that when we lift up the name of Jesus, all men might know who he is. Jesus says that when you lift up his name, all flesh would know Jesus. That means when we lift up our burdens to him, when we lift up our friends for him, when we lift up our concern or our pressures, the things that we face, when we lift it up to the name of Jesus, he sets us free, he speaks to our hearts, and he whispers the Holy Spirit into us so that he gives us courage. He gives us courage to do the things that he's gonna to call to you to do. Just like a baby, he nurtures us. So he's gives us food to make a difference in this world, spiritual. So we're gonna just change gears a bit and just worship. And if you're cool with that, do you mind just raising your hands? It's just an act of surrender. It really is. Every day I need to surrender to Jesus. It's not about salvation for me. It's not about rededication. It's about God, I want to make you known because you are worthy to be known. You are worthy more than anything else this world can ever offer. Any drug, any music, any relationship, there is nothing like it when young people encounter God in a life-altering way. Lord, we lift you up. We praise you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to speak to us afresh as we worship you. Church in BC, Yukon, let's do that tonight. Let's worship the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords.